So on so question, question five, five now, we're looking at a lawful um, we're basis. Looking at, sorry, what so is a lawful basis, basis? Which means we have to follow the guidelines data. of GDPR. So there are under eight the GDPR, which is obviously what we are process uh, personal data in a lawful way um, under the GDPR. Okay. Now, each of these, um, you have to look at to see what is the most appropriate. So the purpose of what you are using the data for and the relationship with the individual that you are creating uh, this uh, contract, if you like, with. Um, you must make sure that the personal data that you are processing is necessary for the company's purpose. So for whatever it is that you're doing, uh, there must be a business reason why you're collecting that data. Um, and the lawful basis is, or bases are um, consent, contract, legal obligation, vital interests, public task, legitimate interests, special category data and criminal offence data. Okay, So let's go through these sort of one after another. Starting with consent, you've got an explanation there. Um, you must give the individual choice and control over their personal data, which means any website that says um, uh, you give us permission to have your uh, to use your data and has the box automatically filled in um, that 's actually illegal now. Uh, it must be that you have to positively opt in so the box should be unticked and you have to tick it to say i agree and it 's the same as with cookies. you have to agree at the bottom um, to having the cookies um, onto your system. Consent requires a clear and specific statement of consent and should be kept separately from other terms and conditions. You must say exactly why you are, um, what you are collecting and for what reason. Um, you must have an individual consent. Each person on your system must have consented. You can't just say everyone uh, adheres to our rules if, if we consent. It must be in English, as in clear and concise, rather than legalese. Um, so you must be absolutely clear with what the consent's for. And at any point, someone can just say, I don't want to give my consent anymore. When that happens, it must be easy for an individual to withdraw that consent, and you must then have an instant way of responding to that withdrawal by removing any information that you hold on that individual. You must keep a log of all the consent that you receive and review consent on a regular basis, updating it with any changes as necessary. So if the person, um, if you, you're, um, what you want to collect changes, you have to immediately tell everyone and they have to then re-consent to it. But also um, you must make sure that you've not missed anyone um, that are on your system that you uh, haven't asked for consent with and anyone who has withdrawn consent has had their details removed. Consent should be made a precondition of a service, which means that if you're doing, using the lawful basis of consent, you must still be able to offer the service even if the person does not offer consent but you might not be able to offer the quite the service that you are hoping to give contract uh, this is a contractual obliga obligation um, so um, an individual has asked the organization to do something before entering a contract so like providing a quote um, the organization should document the decision to use this basis and be able to provide, provide an appropriate justification if required if asked so say you uh, run a bathroom shop and you ask and someone comes in and asks for a quote on um, a new bathroom um, you'll have to process some personal data the address name a time and date for uh, a meeting and there'll be obviously a meeting going into that um, and all of that data is therefore part and part of a contract which then would have to be signed by the individual Legal obligation um, is uh, you're um, only storing this data because it's to comply with a specific law or statutory obligation. So um, you must say what the law is that you are um, storing this information for that requires this processing uh, and why you've then got that, um, you've done that decision. Note that the user doesn't have to give uh, rights to this, doesn't have to give consent. This is your company's legal obligation. Um, so you are saying, I am collecting this data for this reason, whether the individual wants to or not. Vital interests. Um, this is life and death situations. So um, in an emergency, if a hospital needed to access new patients' medical records, they can get hold of that information, um, but only for a very limited time and for a very limited scope, very limited area. Okay. 
Um, it's normally used for sort of short term access uh, to data. It's not really used as a, um, a, a basis for long term storage of data. Um, obviously with medical records uh, you have to actually give consent and there is a contract. Um, public task. Um, if there is a certain legal power um, and as part of that uh, exercising of official authority you must press uh, public oh, uh, restart that you must process personal data um, this comes under the public task requirement okay so we're looking at public authorities here and the information that they have to store so um, Crown Prosecution Service um, anything to do with the police really is covered by this sort of area um, of course that could also come under legal obligation as I say sometimes your um, actual basis might be in multiple areas from this and you've actually got to just decide where the most uh, uh, likely one or the, the one which fits the best uh, is the one to use legitimate interests um, so uh, this base is described as the most flexible for processing human data must be used in a reasonable way and its processing must not have much of an impact on an individual's privacy. So um, this can be something um, such as um, if you're doing some sort of study uh, and you can anonymize quite a lot of the data um, so you can um, uh, you, you've got very little chance of actually identifying an individual um, but you're using it as a legitimate business interest so if your own act, your own interest or for a third party a lot of the advertising law uh, that we have for personalised adverts in uh, social media and Google etc come under this legitimate interests business. You actually give consent uh, through cookies but you don't give consent uh, necessarily to Google to use your personal data that it's stored um, in to, to give you personalised advertisements. But actually that is a legitimate interest of that company. Therefore um, you have to balance this against the individual's interest rights and freedoms but um, if it's the legitimate interest of your business you can actually process that data as long as you are quite broad in how you are um, identifying that individual and you're not being totally specific. Um, there's a, a case of uh, a company called Signal uh, which does a lot of uh, privacy based uh, encrypted communications and they wanted to show just how much data um, Instagram and Facebook actually collect on you by targeting their adverts to specific people. So if you search for um, signal targeted adverts Facebook, you'll find a nice little article on that. And it shows that Facebook probably go beyond what would be considered legitimate interests. Special category data, um, there are 10 different conditions for processing special category data in GDPR. Um, any sensitive data, so race, gender, trade union membership, etc., falls into this law lawful basis. And organisations have to prove there is lawful reason to process this personal data. So if you're asking questions about race, gender, etc., uh, there has to be a specific reason why you're asking for that data. It might be you're doing um, some sort of diversity study, for example, um, but other than that, you haven't necessarily got the right to access that sort of data. Okay, so um, again, it's a very uh, uh, difficult area, and you have to be able to prove uh, why you need information in that special category, and you have to do your utmost to try and make sure that you keep um, an individual's privacy um, as much as possible. Obviously, it's tricky but it's uh, especially like when you're creating external reports you have to make sure that you've anonymized the data as much as possible um, as you can see if you've got legal obligation you can also have criminal offense data so information on criminal allegations proceedings or convictions uh, there must be a lawful basis um, and the organization must also have a legal or official authority so criminal offense data um, holding those information you could get it for uh, you could be asked for your information on a job reference uh, especially if it's uh, uh, you're working with children etc um, but uh, there must be an official authority to actually use that criminal offense data so uh, you can't be asked for that sort of information just to get a pint in a pub for example this task uh, that you see here is just really to use an example of an organisation's internal policy. 
So they're asking um, some informations um, where they're showing that different areas where they're going to um, base the processing on consent, but there are other areas where they may have to uh, use other bases uh, in order to um, present other information. So uh, what you see is um, an internal policy which talks about um, the consent, first of all, with uh, and what five items there are, and then um, what they'll also do to show that the processing is necessary and also document the decision which it applies. As you can see, there's a small, uh, literally, uh, knowledge activity we've got to put um, up to a maximum of three ticks into boxes and then you can look at the answers on page 23 if you so wish on the guide. So uh, you're looking to see which ones could be using a legal obligation as a lawful basis for processing data.